Man must rise above earth, to the top of the atmosphere, for only then will he fully understand the world in which he lives. Socrates, 469-399 BC I like this quote. Of course, we've been to space, and it's safe to say that there's still plenty of understanding to be done regarding the earth. It's nice to know that two and a half thousand years ago we'd collectively been looking at the stars long enough to assemble pithy phrases about reaching them and, through that process, knowledge. The idea of wisdom being somehow connected with the stars is old. Very old. And somewhere during the 3rd or 2nd centuries BC, it crystallised into an object. This object was a pillar of what would become science for almost two millennia and was once calculated to have more than a thousand applications. It's called an astrolabe, and it's this object that we're going to be talking about today. Welcome to Deltas, a podcast about our collective past and present world. Astrolabes are a bit like the slide rules that your parents or grandparents will have used at school. Except 1700 years before slide rules existed. They were used for a huge range of tasks. So, to give you an idea of the object, I'm going to describe it and then explain how we'd use it to tell the time. An astrolabe has the look of a pocket watch without the chain that has been squashed flat into a single plane. Let's start at the top with the ring, from which you can suspend the astrolabe either by your fingers or by hanging it from a piece of string. This links to the mother, which is the main body of the astrolabe. You can tell the back from the front by the next piece because the ruler is attached to the back of the mother. It's a kind of movable arm that rotates fully 360 degrees and folds at right angles at each end, so at the end of it you have these little plates that stick out from it. Now turn the mother back round to face its front, and you'll see the plate. Now these are changeable and engraved with a map of the night sky, and they're changeable because, depending on how far north or south you are, you'll need a different plate to represent the night sky that you're seeing. This leads us to the last part that we're going to talk about, which is the ret, which has a series of pointers which point to different places on the plate, and the whole of the ret also rotates 360 degrees. And now, hopefully you have a rough idea of what the astrolabe looks like, and I encourage you to Google these as well, because they are beautiful. So, this leads us to how to tell the time with an astrolabe. Hang the astrolabe by the ring, maybe from a branch via some string, so it hangs freely and aligns itself perfectly straight. Now, remember that movable arm, the ruler? Rotate that until it's pointing at the sun. To do this, we obviously won't look at the sun, because even in 300 BC, people knew that looking at the sun damaged your eyes. Instead, the little folds of metal at the ends of the ruler each has a hole in it. So by placing your palm at one end of the ruler and rotating it, you can tell when the two holes are aligned with the sun, because the sun will shine through both holes and along the full length of the ruler, casting a circle of light onto your hand like a miniature sun. Lastly, rotate the ret, that inner movable circle that sits over the plate, to align with the ruler. 
and you can read the time as you would on a conventional pocket watch from the outer edge of the mother. Now, we've spoken about one use for the astrolabe. There are hundreds, possibly thousands. They can be used to do surveys. In fact, the city of Baghdad was surveyed using an astrolabe. But they can also be used to calculate distances, work out a building's height, find the longitude and latitude of your current location, work out when the sun will rise or when the sun will set, take the cardinal directions of the compass, north, south, east and west, and calculate those. It'll tell you the position of the planets, the direction of Mecca, or even just your zodiac. It is wonderful that we still have knowledge of how to use these ancient instruments that truly look and feel like objects of their time. So to keep that knowledge alive, I'd like you to do one thing. I'd like you to do a Google image search for the word astrolabe and tweet your favorite astrolabe at Delta's podcast. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.